Hello everyone, I am Shreyansh, PhD student in finance and accounting area at IMB. Today we are going to have a conversation on sustainability risk management. We are joined by Professor Parmini Srinivasan, who is the chairperson for Center for Corporate Governance and Citizenship at IMB. Prior to joining IMB, she has worked for a career spanning more than 14 years across several domains in treasury, planning, MIS and accounting. So ma'am, uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks uh, Shreyans and thanks the Center for uh, Capital Markets and Risk Management for inviting me to this very, very important topic on sustainability risk management. The elephant in the room is actually uh, climate uh, change and uh, issues related to that and how industries and companies are grappling with this idea of uh, sustainability per se with respect to environment sustainability and how this can be incorporated in their own risk management statements and so on. So naturally a very important topic. Yes, ma'am, definitely so. And for the sake of our viewers, can we start from the basic, like how do we define corporate performance and what are the different disclosure mechanisms for corporate uh, okay. performance? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because so far we have been focusing only on the shareholder uh, financial performance or as I say, shareholder capital and the entire disclosure regime also has been focused towards financiers. Uh, what is missing in this discourse, particularly from the annual report and others, is the intellectual capital, the human capital, the natural capital and social capital, which are also very relevant today. And as an impact of all these capitals is the resultant financial capital or the financial performance. So we have not really been able to track these other performance metrics which results in financial performance. So there is a lack of um, you know, reporting mechanisms for all of these and therefore you know, there are a lot of new developments also happening uh, in this area for disclosures of other aspects and looking at the uh, shareholder uh, perspective, not just the shareholder perspective but the stakeholder perspective today. Yes ma'am. And uh, we are also looking that many of the investors nowadays are looking at sustainable investing options. Yeah. They want to be responsible. So considering the interest of the stakeholders and the investors, are the top management or the top executives themselves involved in the sustainability risk management? Okay. So a very good question again. Um, you know, the idea is to look at risk management which the top management is doing as part of its uh, you know routine compliance uh, requirements so board looks at uh, risk management and so on but when you look at risk management today they are talking only about financial risk or operations risk or risk related to supply chain and other aspects uh, of risk and what is missing in this discourse is the sustainability risk management when you look at sustainability, particularly you are looking at environment sustainability and so on, uh, there are a variety of reasons why the senior management and the board are not able to really uh, look at this topic in an integrated way to their whole risk management discourse. And uh, we find there are a variety of reasons for that. Uh, first and foremost, you know, the management is not able to understand the gravity of the situation. So a degree or uh, 1.5 degree increase in the temperature, how that is going to affect the environment, what is the impact of this on the business, they are not able to really grasp that situation. Well, everybody agrees that climate is important, climate changes are important, environment sustainability is important, but really, uh, you know, how important, what's the um, impact of this on the performance? Uh, is getting a little difficult for them to understand. The other challenge is with respect to measuring and tracking the uh, risk management related to environment. When you talk about financial risks and you talk about financial performance, it is easy to quantify both. But when you talk about environment risk, how do you quantify this? How do you measure uh, such risk and how do you report this to the board? 
on what impact this 1 degree or 1.5 degree will have on their performance is very difficult to quantify and measure. So that's another reason. Also, companies are not sure of uh, the investments required for a transition to the low carbon economy or a zero, uh, as we say, zero uh, carbon emission economy by 2030 or 2050 for that matter and so on. So it's not sure how much money is required, how much investments are required for this and so on. And uh, more importantly, we also find that there are uh, discourse on sustainability per se. So there is a disclosure on what companies are doing on sustainability, several measures they are taking, for example, rainwater harvesting or saving energy and so on. But there's not an integrated and integrated focus and more importantly it's not integrated to the strategy of the business so that's one of the uh, major shortcomings on why uh, you know this the importance of it is not yet realized and more importantly as you know you know all such developments whether it is uh, sustainability or social impact or other aspects uh, are and have to be driven by the senior management and the board so it is top driven and therefore it has to start from there. Yes, sir. It's a long answer to a very short question. Actually, um, it's a very important question and that needs to be answered and that needs to be heard and that needs to be, you know, taken into account by the top management yeah. of different companies. And a comprehensive look, I also believe that a comprehensive look is required, not only financial yeah. risk, but all the kinds of environment, environment governance and social risk yeah. should be taken into account. And you mentioned about the climate change. Yeah. So climate change is a big part of environmental risk. Yeah. So are there specific sectors or industries that need to take into account this climate risk more than the other companies? Uh, several companies are affected uh, by um, climate change and so on, but in varying degrees. Yeah. So certain industries are affected directly, certain industries are di uh, affected indirectly. For example, if you take those industries that are um, directly sourcing from agriculture, yeah. you know, they will be very much affected. But there are other allied industries, for example, tractors, you know, yeah. they supply to the agri. So in a way, they will also be affected. So there is a chain reaction to this. And in some way or the others, many industries will be affected because of this climate change. Now, when you talk about this uh, risk management particularly, and you also want to see how companies are disclosing their impact of climate change or their impact on uh, environment and how they are impacted, then we find that reporting and disclosure is pretty abysmal when you talk about uh, you know, the smaller companies versus the larger companies. So large companies, uh, you know, the top 100 companies, which also now have to uh, mandatorily report on integrated uh, reporting and so on, they have better disclosures uh, when they talk about sustainability, risk management and so on. So ma'am, uh, we have a follow-up question that is related to the quality of disclosures. So we have all types of companies in the market, some large cap companies, some mid cap companies, some small cap companies. So are we seeing that there is a difference in quality of disclosures by these companies? This might be related to their financial capabilities and so on. So okay. can you throw more light on this aspect as okay. well? Uh, that's a very interesting question and uh, you know we have done some research on this and we find that the large cap companies as you call it, the top 100 companies are good at disclosing and they have a detailed disclosure on environment related uh, issues and so on. Whereas when you find the subsequent tail-ended, uh, you know, bottom most companies, you find that disclosures are uh, naturally less because like you say, it could be related to, you know, the information that they have to gather and see how that is getting affected, you know, or how that affects their business and so on. So there is a vast difference between disclosures of top companies versus the, you know, small cap companies and so on. That is one. Uh, the second thing I also find is, you know, the institutional investors investments, you know, how are they looking at uh, the environment sustainability and the risk management and so on. We find that if there is a push from the institutional investors, you know, pension funds and others, 
uh, and if the funding is also going to be a challenge for these companies then uh, driven by these institutional investors and so on you will find better uh, disclosures happening across the board uh, for all companies and of course we should not always wait for government to mandate such disclosures i think companies should proactively uh, disclose more information because lack of information will mean more risk uh, not just environment risk but risk in terms of how market reacts to certain uh, events that will affect the company and so on so it's better that companies uh, have a transparent disclosure uh, on how these aspects of climate change or environment and so on will affect their business that's yes i think the initiative needs to be taken from yeah. the side of the companies as well their management as well yeah so that these disclosures are put in place be- before any mandatory restrictions are imposed by yeah. the government and all the stakeholders are benefited from Correct. such disclosures yeah, yeah. so though the uh, such disclosure are not really driven by retail investors it will make sense for all investors whether it's institutional or retail or others to look at uh, how companies are going to be impacted because of these environmental changes and also look at proactively what companies are doing today uh, to look at how to mitigate uh, climate change or how to mitigate uh, issues related to environment and so on so it's a very important area for all investors to look at yeah i think uh, the viewers have learned a lot from your insights and we will try to bring more such videos and i would like to invite you for more having such uh, conversations as well in the future so thank you ma'am for joining us thank you it's my pleasure and uh, thanks to the center for inviting me for this talk thank you thanks